care for your finale. new gin skin yo what is up guys welcome to another wild rift video and oh yes today's video i'll be playing gin in the dragon lane and oh my god this skin is so amazing and the reason that i'm so excited right now is because i know i'm gonna make the best edit of the new gin skin in the beginning part of the video because the music that you heard in the beginning part of the video is actually the music that plays during the ultimate of project gin so in today's video i'm gonna show you guys some gin gameplay I am really good at gin. You know, I, I won't say this too easily, but my gin is like top notch. And I gave a lot of different builds a try. Like I, I also wanted to make you guys an updated gin video. I was just waiting for the skin. The thing is, my old build is still by far the best build on gin. Look, guys, look. I've tried this. I've tried sim builds like this, you know, where you go for Yumo's Ghost Blade, Serrated Dirk, or Yumo's Ghost Blade, and then for the same build as mine. I've tried going for the Champion Rune, you know, Champion Rune. I've tried going for Electrocute. I've tried everything, but like, my build is still by far the best. Like, it's not even close. So let me tell you how this build works and how you play around it. Because I have some updates about, you know, how to play around the build. Basically, this is the energized build, right? Oh, by the way, there's timestamps in the description if you just want to skip to the gameplay. Oh my god, I'm excited for this video. I love making gin videos so much. This is, this is like, like by far my favorite champion, by far. So when I make videos about gin, I don't know, like my heart starts to pump. I get super excited, but okay, let's, let's get into it. So let me tell you why this build is so amazing and why in my opinion you know some other players may say uh, uh, it's wrong but in my opinion you do not need the Yumo's ghost plate so let me tell you obviously the Yumo's ghost plate is good for the movement speed it's really good to catch up to an enemy and everything like that right but let me tell you why you do not need it you go for full crit first of all is way more damage in the late game like maybe even two times more damage it's crazy you're only gonna lack a little bit of damage in the early game but T twice as much damage so the whole point of yumo's ghost plate is basically to catch up to an enemy but let me tell you right now some little secret in a gin build let me tell you where is it boom we smash the proto belt on this build so let me tell you how it works with the proto belt you get close to the enemy and you catch up okay if you cannot catch up you'll get close with the proto belt and catch up now let's take a look at the items that you're building uh storm razor rapid fire cannon static shift that is 20% attack speed, plus 35 is 55, plus 35 is 90% attack speed. Now let me show you guys something else right here. Like This is very important to understand when you play Jin, and why I am telling you guys that you do not need a Yumo's Ghost Plate, and that my build is like superior to any other build. So let, let me show you. Jin gains, so whenever you crit, my build has 100% crit by the way in the late game. Whenever you crit, you gain a burst of movement speed. You can see right now it's 8%. So how does it skill? It's basically 10% plus 0.4% per 1% bonus attack speed. My build gives you 90% bonus attack speed. 0.4% of 90% is 45% bonus movement speed plus 10% is 55. So in the late game, Whenever you hit an enemy with the build that I gave you guys right here, you will not only crit and do a lot of damage, you'll also gain a bonus burst of 55% movement speed. That is why you do not need the Yumo's Ghost Blade. So, uh, Infinity Edge first. You know, it's gonna take you a while to take this item. You're not always gonna get it before the first dragon. You know, Yumo's Ghost Blade is cheaper. I know, I know, but that's the weakness of this build, the early game. 
But the thing is, Jin's kit co uh, compensates for this. His Jin is like really strong in the early game. So you can basically survive. You can even win the early game. That's the beauty of Jin. You do not even need a big early game build. You can still win. After the Infinity Edge, you have to get Boots of Swiftness. Amazing Boots. If the enemy is full attack damage, of course, you can get a Plated Steel Caps. And if they have insane CC, you get the Mercury Threats. But generally, you get the Boots of Swiftness. Second item, Storm Razor. This one is going to give you the slow, yet again, allowing you to catch up even faster. <laughs> Third item is the Rapid Fire Cannon. You can actually go for the Mortal Reminder. If the enemy is very tanky, you're actually better off going for the Mortal Reminder. But if you want to destroy their squishies, boom, Rapid Fire Cannon combined with the Storm Razor is amazing. You can have bonus range and slow the enemy from a very long range. Cat, like You can catch out an enemy very easily because the Storm Razor st slow is actually pretty big. Fourth item, make sure you get a Mortal Reminder. Do not delay your Mortal Reminder to the fifth item. If the enemy has five squishies, maybe, maybe, but no, don't do it. You really need the Mortal Reminder. As I said, you either need it as your third item or your fourth item. And then fifth item, I have a static shift. Let me tell you why. Attack speed, you know, you get more movement speed. And also, Jin converts some of the attack speed to attack damage. And the energized effect. This is basically the energized build. You have three energized items, which is the Storm Razor, Rapid Fire Cannon, and Static Shift. You're gonna do insane burst damage. Insane. If you get to full build, like, you, if you haven't already, you have to watch my previous Jin video. The video almost has 50,000 views because people really love seeing Jin. So, you know, just look up Hell's Devil Jin and take the video on top. You'll see insane damage. Okay, let's now talk about the runes. Fleet Footwork. Multiple reasons that you go for fleet footwork. First reason, early game sustain. Second reason, Jin is already incredibly fast. So you're going to be stacking up the fleet footwork way faster than your average champion, even in the late game. See, the beauty of fleet footwork is some people might think fleet footwork falls off in the late game. No, it does not. Let me tell you why. As you can see, let me show you this right here. Bonus movement speed. Bonus 20% for one second. On Rage Champions, heals for 30%. You know, only the heal gets reduced by, by uh, if you're a Rage Champion. Basically, 20% bonus movement speed for one second. In the late game, you get me, guys? With the Rapid Fire Cannon, Storm Razor, you're going to slow the enemy and you're going to get even more movement speed from the Fleet Footwork. This is basically going to stack with the movement speed that you get from your passive as well. So early game sustain and late game insane speed. Okay, this is just the perfect rune for Jin. Never, ever run any other rune on Jin. Second rune, Gathering Storm. Now here, here it gets questionable, right? Like, what, what am I doing with a Gathering Storm on Jin? Let me tell you. Brutal... Nah, Brutal just sucks. Don't go for Brutal on Jin. Gathering Storm is going to give you insane attack damage in the late game. You can also go for some others. Hunter Vampirism is also a good one on Jin, but it's, it's just not going to give you as much damage in the late game. This one is a bit better in the mid game, but you don't necessarily need it. You don't necessarily need the Vampirism. And then you have Champion Rune. This is the rune that I used to always go for on Jin, but yet again, it, it, it got nerfed from 10% to 8%. Just not worth it. The, 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 like the problem is, um, it's really hard to stay alive because the enemies can just hard focus your lane and all they have to do is kill you once or twice and you're going to lose a lot of damage. And the build, like this build, is going to become significantly weaker in the late game. Because you have to look at it this way. you In the late game, you are full crit. So your basic attacks are going to do crit damage, which is almost two times more damage. Which means... The bonus attack damage that you get from Gathering Storm is going to be worth two times more. If you compare that to the Champion Rune, which only gives you 8% bonus damage in the early game, it's not worth it, guys. That is why you go for Gathering Storm on Jin. <laughs> Third Rune, Conditioning. Or Hunter Titan. Or Bone Plating. The reason that I'm saying or, or, or is Bone Plating is good if you play Jin in the mid lane. You know, like if you're against a matchup that can proc the Bone Plating. In the Dragon lane, you don't want to go for Bone Plating generally. You're much better off going for Hunter Titan if the enemy has a lot of CC or Conditioning. Now, let me tell you why Conditioning is good on Jin. So, as you can see, this is full late game. These are full late game runes. But the thing about Conditioning is 
you're super fast as a djinn, right? You can dodge around stuff. And then the conditioning, if the enemy catches up to you, you're going to have quite a lot of bonus armor and magic resist. Again, gets better in the late game. This is just a really, really good rune on djinn. It doesn't allow the enemy to completely one-shot you because, you know, you'll have a little bit more tankiness. You can tank like maybe one or two more basic attacks, but those one or two basic attacks can be life or death, right? As a djinn, because you're so fast, you have so much mobility. So you only have to tank for a short duration and conditioning is going to allow you to do that now fourth rune it's it depends it depends on what you want mastermind to push turrets and secure objectives Jin is insanely good at securing objectives with his uh, uh passive you know or sorry with his fourth shot you can outsmite any jungler no one can win a smiting battle against Jin. if you're against a nunu you need a mastermind and then even nunu cannot win against you um, Sweet Tooth is good because Sweet Tooth is broken and because, you know, it allows you to sustain in lane. You don't really need it though, you know, you don't really need it. The only reason that you would need it is for your mana, to be honest. But if you need, if you really want to spam your abilities, you can also go for a mana flow band on Jin. actually. I personally always go for Sweet Tooth or Mastermind, personally. Uh, for your spells, you want to go for Flash and then it depends. If your support goes Ignite and you want to be very aggressive, you can go for a heal. If you, uh, if you want to play it a little more defensive, you can go for a barrier. If the enemy has all in champions, you can even go for an exhaust. Like if, if the Katarina's constantly die, or sorry, if the enemy has like a Katarina or an Akali, you can actually get exhaust. And if they dive you, you can exhaust them and they're not going to kill you. Exhaust is a bit better in the late game again, but yeah, I'm, you know, generally barrier or heal. It's just generally better. So enough about the build and everything like that. Let's now get into the gameplay. All right, on to the gameplay, guys. On to the gameplay. Project Jin, and let me tell you right now, it's not my favorite Jin skin, but I absolutely love it. The ultimate is so amazing. Like the soundtrack that you hear during the ultimate, you should listen carefully when you hear the ultimate. is really amazing. So look at it. Look at it. Look at how cool this skin is. So let's talk about how to play Jin and why I always say Jin sucks and everything like that. Okay, you know, because I have a lot to say about Jin. Because as I said, I'm a really good Jin player and even I don't spam Jin. And the reason is, there is a very simple reason, like one major reason, which is if your team sucks, Jin is useless. Okay? With with uh, with ADCs like Jinx, Vayne, Ezreal, Kai'Sa, Varys, uh, you you call them. Even if your team sucks, you can still carry the game. But with Jin, no, Jin like I'm almost hesitated to say never. Like you can basically never win a game if your team if your team is not good when you play Jin because you cannot solo carry the game. The whole power of Jin, Jin like the whole power of Jin is um, utilizing your second ability, your ultimate, and just having your team protect you. Because Jin doesn't deal sustained damage. Jin is all about the burst damage, guys. That's what Jin is all about. So with Jin, you know, you really need a good team. As you can see, what I'm doing here is as a Jin, you can be very oppressive in the lane because you can push out waves incredibly fast. Even though you have a gathering storm, you can still push out waves fast. Uh, with your first ability and I capitalized on that. I pushed it out. I actually went to the enemy blue buff and I warded it, which is really good for our team because now we have potential to invade because the enemy has a master E, which is very easy to invade. And as you can see, the way that I'm laning is I'm just using my first ability on uh, minions that are low because when your first ability kills minions and then bounces to an enemy, it deals like 30% more damage and it stacks 30, 30, 30. If you can kill three minions, it deals insane damage, even in the early game. So right here, this is amazing for us. As you can see, I'm pushing out this wave, rotating to my team. We can actually fight because, you know, uh, I pushed out the wave. We can just go. We can invade, do something. So let's take a look at this. I'm invading, you know, because we can go for it. Um, we should just hard focus this blue buff right here. Let's take a look. Uh, it's a bit risky, but we can. Like, we can just go for it. Let's take a look. I place my trap to keep the Master E off. Boom. I think, yeah, he filled his smite, unfortunately. That kind of sucks. It's okay, but kind of sucks. As you can see, you know, in a situation like this, when you go for my build, you are going to lack a little bit of damage, right? I'm not going to tell you my build is absolutely perfect. I'm just telling you that it has some weaknesses, like right there. You could see, you know, I didn't really do a lot of damage. It's okay, though, you know, it's okay. Because 
with all the other builds where you build a lethality item and you go for champion rune or anything like that it's true that you'll be very strong in the early game but you'll be useless in the late game that's kind of the problem right if you screw up in the early game you'll be useless with all of those builds this build is going to make you insanely powerful in the late game like you'll literally be a late game champion as i said the struggle is if your team sucks you suck as a gin and i really don't have anything to tell you about that there is a reason that i picked this game to show you guys i'm not going to spoil anything i'm just saying there is a reason you might want to watch until the late game you might there is a reason so let's talk about the Jin Ultimate. You know, in the last Jin video that I made, I asked you guys to test your knowledge. Oh, by the way, I'm doing a 15 skin giveaway as well. And it's ending in two days. You know, next year I'm going to do more giveaways. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is put down a comment under this video. And if you win, you can actually pick the Project Jin skin yourself if you want to. So all you have to do to enter is put down a comment under this video and under some other videos. Give the video a like. You're not going to get anything for giving it a like. It just helps the channel. So if you want to, give the video a like, you know, it helps the channel and everything like that. So what I'm doing right here, I'm actually freezing the lane because they backboarded. You know, I can make them lose some farm. And if they come close to the lane, I just use my first ability and uh, do a lot of poke damage because the first ability bounce are pretty big, right? And um, the supports that you want to pick Jin with, this is really important yet again. Like, I'm mostly talking about, um, um, how do I explain this in easy words? Uh, I'm mostly talking about things that you cannot control when you play Jin. What I mean with that is you're very reliant on these, these things, like which support is with you and whether or not your team is good, you know, things like that. Um, because with Jin, you have to pick him with a support that has CC, you know, like Alistar's knockup like uh, uh nami's first ability nami ultimate like uh you know wait how am i not able to think about supports that can do that oh leona thrash you know these types of supports those are the ones that you want to pick with Jin. do not pick janna with Jin. do not pick like soraka with Jin. you know because the reason is you cannot combo your second ability with them like when alistar engages i have a free route my second ability oh you have a five minutes separate Okay, thank you all. Let's take a look at this. He knocks him up. Look, this is what I mean. Stun, it's also easy for your ultimate. See that? You know, like, it's not only your second ability, it's also your ultimate. Jin becomes infinitely better if you have CC in your team. Simple. You become infinitely better. It's like off the grid how much better you become. So, you could see that Alistair did a great engage. I, I rooted with my second ability, ulted an easy peasy kill. That's how it works. So take a look at this. I'm in a risky position. Look, my team is diving hardcore and they didn't defend me. Master Yi could have potentially killed me there. This is not how you... Like, you can clearly see I'm already super reliant on my team. Because the Master Yi could have killed me there and I would have gotten destroyed. So here we got the dragon, but the enemy's got like th four kills. Is that worth it? I mean, nah, not really. Because the Diana is going to be a problem for us now. So it's not really worth it. What I'm doing here, actually, is I'm not going to the bot lane. Instead, I'm staying in the mid lane, and um, I'm gonna try to go for the Rift Herald. You know, I'm gonna try to do something here. Because, I, you know, I can either push the mid lane, or I can get Rift Herald with my team. So, Alistar is defending bot lane. This is good. But I am staying here, as you can see. You know, I want to do something. And here I have a choice. Rotate and help my team, or push mid lane. What am I doing? I'm actually pushing mid lane. In this game, I'm running the Mastermind room. So, I'm gonna push the mid lane turret pretty fast. I'm pinging my team, hey guys, I'm doing the mid lane, relax, you know, don't die, just let me push the turret. As you can see, I'm getting a lot of gold right here. This is going to get me very ahead, you know, pushing out minis as fast as, as I can. Boom, boom, first ability, boom, and boom, and I need to go for that turret. I can get it, look. And I am going to get super ahead because of this. Look at that, I got so much gold, especially, oh. Yeah. Especially when you have the Mastermind rune. Because with Mastermind, you get 100 more gold and you get more experience when you take objectives. So when you play Mastermind Jin, you need to, you know, you know, you need to go for those objectives a little more than usual. That's why in this case, I let my team, you know, I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll take the turret. Because now I am really ahead. I got myself very ahead because of that. Yeah, enemy is gonna get Rift Herald, but whatever, it's fine. Look at this. 6,400 gold. 
I'm 2,000 gold ahead of anyone in my team because I took that turret. That turret basically got me like 1,000 gold. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys because I also got the first turret. You see what I mean? Oh, my team actually has a good engage there. I'm gonna go for another turret, by the way. You can see, you know, this is what I'm doing when I run the Mastermind Rune on Jin. Because you can push turrets super fast. Boom, 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 boom. And about your traps, your third ability. Look, I'm gonna throw it right there. I know it already because, you know, this is basically what you always do on Jin. You need to utilize the traps to get vision and trap those important places. Look, another turret, boom. There it is. And I can already get a Storm Razor. Boom. Ah, oh, the Brahm is body blocking. I need to run away. Oh, if that ash arrow hit me, I would have actually been dead. Now we got the ultimate. Boom. 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 And boom. I hit every single shot. Oh, except that second shot, actually, because the Masty already died. They're going a little too far here. Boom. Ah, he pushed the Darius close to me. Oi, 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 oi. Oh. That was a little dangerous. Alistar pushed a fully stacked Darius next to me. That's a little risky, you know, but it's okay. So, as you can see, I accelerated my lead by pushing those turrets. I got two turrets and I can get two items now. And um, even though my Akali is getting a lot of kills, as you can see, I'm gonna root him. Oh, he actually dashed away. Um, I am still super ahead of the Akali, simply because I was pushing turrets with the Mastermind Rune. As you can see, I'm 1,300 gold ahead of the Akali, which is a lot of gold. And Storm Razor is a pretty big power spike, by the way, especially at the nine minute mark, because at the nine minute mark, you're also gonna get the stack from the Gathering Storm. You know, you're gonna get bonus AD. So at this moment of the game, this point right now, I am pretty strong, pretty strong. Two item power spike, got the attack damage from the Gathering Storm. We wanna fight. It's a good moment to fight, right? So let's take a look at this. You want to prepare fights by throwing that third ability on the ground. You know, just because it's really good. The slows, the damage. It's just a really good thing to do. Just throw down your third ability in position. Look, third ability, boom. Oh, nice. I still hit him. Look at that. We just killed the Darius in the front line. Boom. I'm hitting the Master Yi. Boom. Look at that damage, guys. That was an amazing ultimate because the Master Yi was in our front line. And I just destroyed him with my ultimate. Boom, boom. And boom. Easy peasy fight. My team played that fight amazingly, as you can see. If your team, like if you're with your full team, with Jin, you know, as a five-man team, they all fight, they all stun the enemies, they all get the enemies to low amounts of HP, that's when Jin is broke, like, no, not broken. That's when Jin is, like, amazing. Because your fourth shot deals more damage to an enemy that is low, and your ultimate deals 3% more damage for each percent missing health. So as you saw there, the Master Yi was at a low amount of HP, I killed him, because my team was getting him to a low amount of HP. But if your team sucks, or if your team doesn't rotate and everything like that, you cannot do anything on Jin. Because, you know, if you, if you are going to be the one responsible for getting the enemy team to a low amount of HP, Jin is not that good at doing that. Jin is good at finishing off enemies, guys. So you want, to do your you want your team to kind of do the dirty work. Let's take a look at this. Boom. Rooted, and he's dead. He gets rooted and he's literally dead. Easy. See how easy that is? It was a very predictable path, so I could root him. Easy kill. Simple as that. Catching out enemies is also one of Jin's powers, guys. You need to be utilizing these powers that I'm talking about right now. Because Jin sucks. The ADC sucks so badly. He's insanely bad. Like, I think, I genuinely think, like half of my losses on Jin are SVP losses which means MVP in the losing team. And the simple reason is that Jin sucks. I have a 58% win rate on Jin, which is quite high, but that's only because I'm insanely good at Jin. It's you know, just really good at Jin, but I just can't win all of them. I can't win all of them because Jin, Jin just can't. Like, look, the Brom can just body block right there and it's gonna be hard for me to do anything. Oh, they're everywhere. Let's take a look at this fight. Look, my team is diving their back line. I am sitting here alone. Look at this. The Brom body blocks. I actually, oh, what I did there was beautiful. Let me tell you that why it was beautiful. I flashed behind the Braum so his shield wouldn't block my fourth shot on the Ash. But Ash used a barrier which allowed her to survive. And then also the Braum body blocked the root. So what I'm saying here, please try to stay with me. 
You know, even though diving them and getting a kill is nice, but they need to protect me. If the enemy, like, in a situation like that, my team needs to be with me. Akali and, and uh, Alistar, they need to stay with me and protect me. That's how we can win the fight. We will never win a fight if they just leave me alone like that. Here I'm trying to defend the turret, you know, it's like a desperate attempt. But Braum is just body blocking all of my shots. Braum is really annoying. Let's take a look at this fight. Boom! Rooted. Let's take a look. Bonus movement seed. Boom! I have Proto Belt. Boom! Basic attack. Boom! Another kill. We go on the Master Yazo. Boom! 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 And boom! Quadra kill, baby! Look at that! I just destroyed them! This is also what I mean with the late game movement speed. Right? What the hell is Aurelia doing? Um, what was I saying? I have a lot of attack speed items, so if I just get one shot on the enemy, they can never escape anymore. No one can escape a Jin, guys. I look at this, Jin can also secure Barons and Dragons. Uh, my Camille actually smited it pretty early, but yeah, you can secure it. Look, I can also secure this, boom, see that? Thousand damage on the blue buff. Jin can secure everything. Right now, I'm just incredibly fat. This game is pretty much over, like, we pretty much won the game. All we have to do is stick together and fight. Like, there is no way that we should lose a fight. No way. All we have to do is 5 versus 5, protect Jin, and win the game. And we win. I have 4 items, Gathering, Storm, everything. I literally have everything right now. So, this game is like, you know, we won. I have a Baron as well, Infernal Dragon is spawning. We just have to 5 versus 5 at the Infernal Dragon, and we win. Because the Baron gives me bonus attack damage as well. I don't know what the Aurelia is doing, but... It's, it's actually fine, you know, because she's baiting the Mastery to go up, we can just take a free Dragon, which is another 6% bonus damage, yeah, there it is, easy Dragon, this is an easy Dragon, because Mastery is not here, Irelia actually did a good move by pushing top, because, yeah, you know, free Dragon, very, very good, what do we have to do now, push, just relax, no reason to, you know, no reason to go, ay Camille, what are you doing, look at this, this is what I mean, this is horrible, Braum just body blocks me. I still killed the Braum, but I cannot do anything. What am I supposed to do? Like, what can... Uh, Jin cannot do anything. I flash away. Boom! I still got a kill. Like, I'm, I'm just... I'm, I'm playing so well in this game, but you can clearly see... This Jin cannot do anything like that. The Braum was just body blocking their support. The enemy support is really good. And for some reason, my Camille just dives in 1 versus 4 and dies like an idiot and then allows the enemy to engage on me. You can see even in that completely disadvantageous position, I was still able to kill two of them. This is still a free win. This is literally still a free win. This game is like, there is no way we should lose this game. I have four items on Jin. I have a late game build. I'm only gonna get tankier, only gonna get more damage. We have an amazing team to protect me. You know, Camille can ult Master Yi. We have Alistar. You know, we just have everything. We have Aurelia's ultimate to slow all of them. All we have to do is 5 versus 5. But yet again, this is the problem of Jin. You're reliant on your team. You're very reliant on your team. So let's take a look at what's going to happen. I'm just, I'm just really trying to convince my team how to play with Jin. I'm just really, really trying to tell them what they need to do. So what is happening again? They're going... Okay, that's good. I rooted him, but there we go again. There we go again. There we go again. There we go again. What can I do? As a Jin, you cannot do anything here. Rooted. Boom. Oh, he actually dodged the root with his ultimate. That was amazing. That was actually very well played by the Darius. But yeah, yet again. What can I do? As a Jin, you cannot. You just can't. I'm really trying to just, you know. But yeah. Jin cannot do anything like this. Yeah. Just, we made the same mistake. Yet again. And we lost the game. We lost a free win. I mean, well, yeah, it is what it is, right? Everyone tried to win. It was a good game. But this is the problem of Jin, guys. This is why I will always keep putting Jin in the D tier or like the Jin tier. Because he sucks. Doesn't matter how good you play. He sucks. You need a good team. And I was not playing solo queue, by the way. I was playing duo queue. And my support was pretty good. As you can see, SVP. Look, I, I, I even did quite a lot of damage. You cannot play Jin in solo queue, by the way. Because you will just lose every game. 
in a duo queue you can with a good support like look look at my history i'm gonna show you guys my history svp svp win win i've only won i've won every single game on Jin, and the rest is an svp that's how Jin works guys so you know i really hope you guys still enjoyed the video you know i wanted to show you guys the basic struggle that you're gonna have with the Jin, and you kind of need to chat with your team and tell them don't do this do this blah 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 but yeah i still hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you all in the next Walder video bye bye